Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you have dry under eyes and you feel like you're constantly having issues with your concealer during the day, if you're trying to avoid cakey concealer and you have dark circles, you're trying to cover, but you also have texture under your eyes or fine lines, this video is for you. Sometimes no matter what you do, you feel like you're doing everything right, but you still just feel dry and wrinkly during the day. You feel like things look cakey. Your under eyes aren't setting correctly. Nothing is working quite right. What do you do? This is a video that I have been contemplating for a long time now and I'm doing it because of feedback that I've gotten in my comments and messages that I've gotten from you, from my viewers. And I've just thrown out one tip or trick that has helped you immensely and it warms my heart so much when you write me back and say, oh my gosh, thank you so much, that helped. I have quite a few videos on under eye issues, whether it's how-to videos or reviews on under eye concealers. That's how a lot of you have found me, is from these videos. I have dark circles under my eyes. I have texture, I have fine lines. I'm over 40, this is an area that I feel strongly about it's an issue. It can make you feel really self-conscious about yourself no matter what your age is. If you're fighting that concealer battle, I am fighting that battle with you. These are issues that I have been facing. I've got the texture, I've got the dark circles, and that's why this is such a passionate issue for me too. So I'm compiling some tips and tricks that I feel will help you. But first, if you are not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Now I will go ahead and say that sometimes the bright natural light that I have in here and the light in front of me can wash things out so you might watch my application and think she doesn't have dark circles. Trust me, I do. There are a lot of tips and tricks in this video. I'm not saying to do all of them every single day. That could be very time consuming, but if you take one or two and implement them on a daily basis, it could really help you retain a little bit more moisture, avoid some cakiness, whatever your particular goal is, it may help you. You may have a day every now and then where you think, I know I'm gonna be extra dry today by the end of the day and I'm gonna throw the whole gamut at my under eye area and that's okay too. I wanted to just give you all the tips and tricks so that you would have some tools at your disposal to use. The first thing you wanna think about when you're thinking about your under eye area and the skin underneath your eyes is skincare. Before we talk about eye creams, I'm actually going to talk about facial oil. At night, a lot of us, once we start anti-aging skincare, we start using facial oils. If you have oily combination skin like I do, I only use a facial oil at night. If you have dry skin, you may use one in the morning too. But in the morning, I take that facial oil and I take one drop, I try to do a half a drop if I can, and I'll take it between my two fingers and dab it underneath both eyes. And that is going to give me a little bit of moisture in addition to the eye cream that I'm going to put on top of it. I let that sink in for maybe a minute or two while I do other things. This is going to just give you a little bit of extra moisture. Some people will do the oil over the eye cream. I prefer to do it underneath. Whatever works for you, this is all about customizing your own routine. The next thing you wanna think about is eye cream. Some people are fine just using a regular moisturizer and a regular face cream. They don't believe in eye creams. If that works for them, that's wonderful. I used to do this and then realized my eye area is different than the rest of my skin. I have oily combination skin, but my eye area is dry and I just can't use the same skincare underneath my eyes as I do on my face. I need a little more intensive therapy underneath the eyes. So I do use an eye cream. However, I use a treatment type eye cream at night and a hydrating one during the day. It does seem a little bit high maintenance, but a lot of times those treatment type eye creams are not hydrating enough to keep that moisture underneath your eyes all throughout the day. There are a few, the SkinCeuticals AGE eye cream I find does give me enough moisture to where I can use it 
at night and in the morning, but there's just not many that I've tried that provide both treatment and moisturization. In the morning, I'll use something hydrating like Kiehl's Avocado. That's just been a staple for me for a really long time to use during the day. And I'll just take a small amount between two fingers and dab it under both eyes. I do bring some onto my lids. This is good to do if you do have dry lids. I will again, let that sink in. I saw a video by Wayne Goss where he said, put on your eye cream, let it sink in, put on some more, let it sink in, put on some more, let it sink in and just repeat because that will plump up the eye area. The more hydration you have, the more plumped up your under eye area is gonna be. So if you're feeling particularly dry, you may wanna repeat this step a few times. The next step is primer. Now this is optional and this is not something that I do every day, but it can help smooth the lines out underneath your eye. I just use whatever eyeshadow primer is currently in my rotation right now. It's the Milani eyeshadow primer. I take a tiny bit between both fingers and I just dab it underneath both eyes very, very gently and then let that set. I was going to say soak in. You don't let that soak in. You just let it set so that it can do its job. This next step is using coconut oil after my primer, if I used a primer or after my skincare before I go in with any corrector. I'm not sure exactly why it works the way it does, but it is coconut oil in particular and I don't like using the big tub. I like putting it in a contact lens case because it's just smaller and I can keep it right here at my makeup table. I just take a teeny, teeny, tiny bit on my finger and I dab it lightly underneath my eyes. I saw this on a video from a girl. It's got tons of views, like 500,000 views, and she's hilarious. I'm gonna link that video below. Her video just really made me laugh and I thought, I'm gonna try that and it really does help. And I feel like it helps retain the moisture during the day. So I just add that on and I let it set while I put my foundation on. When you are putting your foundation on, do not bring it underneath your eyes. A lot of people do this, but when you bring your foundation underneath your eyes, it puts an extra layer there, which also accentuates any texture that you have underneath your eyes. So you think that you are covering more, but it's not really the formulation that you want to cover with. You want to use things that are specifically made to cover the under eye area. So when you apply your foundation, bring it all over your face except for your eye area because when you put on your corrector your concealer it's going to blend into that anyway and it won't make any difference no one will be able to tell you don't have foundation underneath your eyes i have been talking about corrector on my channel probably since it first started i firmly believe in using a corrector underneath your concealer if you have discoloration under your eyes and if you have dark circles you do have some sort of discoloration using a corrector and not just a concealer helps you use less concealer which can create more texture you can just dab on a small amount directly where the discoloration is and you just overall need less product i've used a lot of different correctors in my lifetime and i have a few favorites but none of them have actually treated the under eye area while they corrected until i tried the color science total eye three-in-one renewal therapy they approached me about partnering with me for this video and i'm so glad that they did because i have used this product every single day since i got it i think it was three weeks ago it may even be a month now. It launches on colorscience.com on February 1st, but the basis of this product is that it has SPF 35 in it. I'm excited about that because a lot of times when I put my sunscreen on, I feel like I don't quite get it right up by my eyes the way that I should. It also neutralizes the discoloration with a peachy undertone, which is perfect because that's the tone that you want in a color corrector and it addresses long-term eye concerns like fine lines, wrinkles, and dark circles. I'm still using it to get those long-term effects, but I can tell you this is the most moisturizing, creamy corrector that I have ever used in my entire life. I've used it on non-makeup days without concealer over it. It looks completely natural. It pats in easily. It looks really, really nice. I've used it on full out makeup days underneath concealer and it looks really great. It works beautifully. It feels light. I was a little nervous that it might feel heavy since it is so creamy and hydrating, 
but it's not. If you're looking for hydration under the eyes, this is a product that you definitely need to check out. I really like the way this dispenses. It's got this cooling applicator, so it feels nice when you apply it. You can apply it directly from the applicator. You can even put it on the lids if you feel like you have discoloration on your lids, and it just works beautifully. You can apply it throughout the day if you want to. It's been a long time since I've been this impressed with a corrector. Like I said earlier, I'm constantly battling my under eye area. They are offering a free mascara with the purchase of the Total Eye Therapy. The code for that is Total Eyes M, and I'll have the link down below. Like I said earlier, if you have used a corrector, you can use a lot less concealer than you normally would. I am using today the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Concealer. I've really been loving this concealer. I find that it hydrates a little bit more than Shape Tape and it covers just as well. But you can see how little that I'm having to use of it. I have a video where I tested 14 different concealers for my dry under eyes with dark circles and texture and all that good stuff. I'm gonna link that for you because I go into depth about what I think about a bunch of different concealers and which ones I liked and which ones I didn't and why and I show you up close how they worked on my dark circles. I had not tried the Estee Lauder one at that time, so I wanted to bring it up today and show it to you. Another one that I hadn't tried that I'm really liking is the Catrice for a less expensive option. It's not quite as hydrating as the Estee Lauder, but every other one that is in my rotation is in that video. When you set your concealer, I find I really like to set it with a damp beauty blender. It might be a little different than what you're used to if you just dust on loose powder. I do have some setting powder videos where I go through setting powders and the difference between finishing powder and setting powders. I can link those below as well. But I feel like a lot of people dust loose powder under their eyes with a brush and use very, very little loose powder. There are some really finely milled loose powders where that is the only way to do it. But I always try the damp beauty blender method first. And the way I do it is I just dip the beauty blender in, I tap off a little bit of excess, and then I pounce the beauty blender underneath my eyes and dust it away immediately. I don't bake underneath my eyes because that emphasizes texture, but I feel like anytime a viewer tells me that they get creasing underneath their eyes even when they set, it's usually because they are dusting powder underneath their eyes with a brush. It doesn't allow the powder to really set the concealer underneath their eyes because they're not really packing it in there. And I feel like when you set it that way, you don't get the texture and you don't get the creasing like you normally would if you just dusted it on. Some of you may be really lucky and not have to set underneath your eyes at all. You may be able to go throughout the day and never crease. If you are one of those people, consider yourself lucky because you don't have to deal with powder underneath your eyes. I feel like once you add powder, you do add a little bit of texture. But there are some people like myself that the second we put our concealer on and look in any direction, we crease. I do have to use some kind of powder and I just try to make the best of a bad situation. I guess that's the best way to put that. I'm not going to be completely wrinkle free using all these methods because that's just not my anatomy. I am over 40 and I'm going to have crinkles under my eyes and some days I feel like I am more wrinkly than others. I don't know if any of you are like that, but hopefully I can make things the best that they can be. And I definitely feel like implementing some of these tips and tricks and sometimes all of these tips and tricks helps keep the hydration and keep things as smooth as they can possibly be while eliminating the cakiness and eliminating that feeling of dryness and tightness as the day goes on. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that it was helpful. If you have any tips and tricks and if you feel like any of these have helped you, please leave that in the comments below. That's a huge part of my channel is the community and getting those comments below. I love hearing from you guys. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you so much for your feedback. If you're not following me on my social media, I'm going to put those on the screen and down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Uh -oh.